Hello and welcome. Thanks so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about how to remove objects in Photoshop. Now when you're photographing for real estate, vacation rentals, you actually don't want to remove objects typically because that would be a form of misrepresentation and it's really vital that you set the expectations, you let people know exactly what they will find at the property. You don't want to misrepresent. However, when you're working with designers, the focus is more on the design and the intent of the design. And sometimes things like outlets on a backsplash or uh, cables or little household items that just kind of get in the way of the aesthetic can actually be removed. And not only can they be removed, they should be removed. Most clients are going to be expecting that or really wanting you to be able to offer that. So being able to remove objects is really crucial to know how to do when you're working with designers. It's going to come up a lot. Now we're going to talk about how to use the clone stamp tool and the patch tool in Photoshop to do that. And it's actually quite simple. I especially love the patch tool and I think once you start playing with it and you see what it can do, you're going to want to use it more and more. It's really a fantastic tool. Now we're going to use this photo today to um, do some practice with the tools and you'll see that it's edited but there are some outlets here along the backsplash. There's this equipment here that I think was part of a security system or something and we're going to remove uh, one of these can lights and there's a little bit of like a trash bag peeking through this drawer here and a couple of little specks on the floor. So we're going to dabble with how to remove all of these items so that you can see them in action. You can see the tools in action. We're going to start with the clone stamp tool. Now, clone stamp tool is here. This is the icon for it. You can also press the letter S. And the patch tool is two tools above that. You can also press the letter J. So we're going to start with clone stamp. And we're going to go into one of these outlets. Now when you go in the clone stamp tool, you'll see that there's all these settings that come up here. Really the only ones I want you to focus on are making sure that it's in normal mode. I want you to be on a brush that has a soft edge, so either the soft round pressure size or the soft round, either one. And the opacity, I usually like to keep it somewhere around 50%. You can go higher if you want. When I'm working on the final photos for designers, I like to really use a soft brush just to have a little bit more control and like gently layer the effect rather than having a really heavy handed brush and then having to undo some things. And the flow, I like to keep it nice and low just again to kind of um, really have a, 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 a slow, soft brush. Now, when we're in this tool, the first thing you're going to notice is the brush size. And you'll see the brush size here is pretty big. We want to shrink that down. And we can do that up here, setting the size here on the slider. You can also set the hardness of um, the edges. And we are going to actually adjust the size by using the bracket keys. It's just a lot quicker. So we're going to use the left bracket key to make it smaller or the right bracket key to make it larger. So for this case we're going to go a little bit smaller because we're not doing a big wide open area. We're doing an area that has a tighter pattern with the subway tile. And before you start clicking, if you click now, it's going to tell you that you need to, um, you need to tell it a source point. Now a source point is essentially telling the clone stamp where you're going to copy from. So we're going to press Alt or Option if you're on a Mac and you'll see that it changes to a little bullseye there from your brush to that little bullseye. When it's on that bullseye you want to go ahead and click your source point. So I'm going to click right here on this crease between the subway tiles, this grout area and just click there. Now I've selected my source point and what you're going to see is now my brush it shows a preview of what it's going to do when I click. So I need to show, I need to select a starting point for where I'm going to start copying. So I'm going to line this up with where 
that grout line needs to be and click and drag. So click and drag. And you'll see as I'm dragging that there's a little white crosshair to the right. That is my source point. That is where I just told it to start. So it's using that as a guide of telling me, okay, this is where I'm copying from. So you gotta remember the clone stamp literally will just copy and paste. It'll just copy from where you tell it to to where you tell it to. And that can be really fantastic and perfect for what you need, but it also has its drawbacks because sometimes you need it to blend a little more intelligently or you need it to kind of think a little bit more about what it's doing versus just blindly copying and pasting. So that's where the patch tool is gonna to come in and we'll go over that in a minute. So here we are, we are gonna finish this up kind of quickly. And once you have your outlet removed, one thing you're going to notice on this one, for example, is that there is a grout line missing. So right here, there would be a line between the tiles. And because there was an outlet there, we now don't have one. So we need to put one in. So once we have this outlet taken out, the next step is going to be to add in that grout line between tiles. I'm gonna do this a little bit quicker just for the sake of the demonstration. So now we have this outlet removed. And remember you can always reselect a source point just to kind of smooth things over. There we go. So now we have our outlet removed, but we're missing a line right there. So we're gonna go and look at, okay, where is there a grout line that looks like it would fit well right there? So I'm gonna pick, let's see, I'm gonna actually pick this one right here. I'm gonna copy that one over. So again, we're gonna press Alt or Option and pick our source point. And this time I'm gonna start right here in that intersection and click. So now, that's what it's gonna copy for me. So now we go right around to where that grout mark would be and we click and drag. And it's gonna start pasting that in there for me. And because we're doing a one point perspective and we're looking at everything straight on, there's no worrying about whether there's a forced perspective and things are shrinking or expanding with that perspective. So everything is gonna be very even in size and color, relatively even in light. So if I zoom out, you can see it looks like there was nothing there. So that's how you would remove an outlet. Now, let's go over to using the patch tool and I think I'm gonna do that one with this little trash bag here at the top of the drawer by the dishwasher. Now we press J, or we can go over to the patch tool here on the left. And the first thing you'll notice is there's no brush. It's not a brush tool. You actually click and drag and draw freehand, just like that. And if you wanna deselect, you just click once anywhere outside of it. And the great thing about being able to draw freehand is, well, first of all, this tool, even if you just draw kind of disconnected shapes like lines or arches, it will connect them and close that for you to make a selection. What you do is you select your area. It's really ideal for anything that's irregular shaped. And within that selection area, you're going to click and drag, and that's where you tell it what to use as your source. So that was a little bit, a little bit more sloppy than I would like. So we're gonna go a little bit tighter in. Now the downfall to this tool I have found is that when you have areas that are, that's a little bit better, that are um, high in contrast, they have a contrasting color next to it. If you're trying to correct something right along that edge, it tends to have a lot of bleed. 
And what I mean by that is if there's something right up along here, say that I want to remove this line. If I go right up to this line, because it does this sort of intelligent blending and it tries to really make sense of what you're doing, let me see if it'll do it here. Yeah, so see, when it's right up against a contrasting color, right on that edge, it starts to bleed with the other color. So there isn't that hard edge to it when you want that. And there's really no way of telling it to have a harder edge because the intent of the patch tool is to patch pieces together seamlessly. So it's going to want to have those soft edges that blend. So it's not something you want to use when you need to do something right along an edge. That's where you might want to maybe start with the patch tool and then go into a clone stamp to do those edges or just use a clone stamp for the entire correction if you can. But here, for example, you can see it did a pretty good job of getting rid of that little bit of um, the trash bag that was peeking through. And even, you know, there's those little specks there. I didn't even notice those. So it's kind of nice because with the patch tool, you can do really quick freehand corrections. Uh, we're going to go up here to this can light, and I want to show you that in, in situations like this, it's really good because you're looking at a surface that has light and shadow on it that is not even. The light is from the window, so it's stronger over here and it's kind of fading. You have a little bit of shadow here, you have more shadow here. So it's not an even surface like we had on the tiles or if you were doing something on the front of the cupboards. And in this case, I would recommend the patch tool because it's a more intelligent blend. With the clone stamp, you're just gonna be copying and pasting. And so it's gonna be a lot harder to get that really clean gradient of light to shadow. But the patch tool does a pretty good job of doing that for you. So you can quickly just freehand it, drag it to a clean area, and it looks like nothing was ever there. So I highly recommend the patch tool for most object removals, but the clone stamp is really good for when you need to be working up against a hard edge or, um, or if you have a really clean pattern, a really clean surface where you're looking at it in one point perspective. If there's no kind of gradient light falling on it, then the clone stamp should be good for you. One last really quick sample I wanna show you is on wood floors. The patch tool is great because again, it looks for the patterns that make sense. It looks for how to blend it so that it makes sense. So I might take this little dot here and just click and drag and click and drag and it does a really good job of making it look pretty seamless so that when you're looking at the entire photo, you really can't tell there was ever anything there. And so, Again, patch tool, highly recommended. It's gonna give you a really quick, pretty clean edit for a lot of these removals. And these little details are exactly what will make a difference when you're delivering final photos to your designer clients. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions on this, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. There are more videos coming and thank you so much for joining me today while we looked at how to remove objects in Photoshop. I'll see you guys next time.